Hello, I'm Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the Resourceful CEO. Today, I'm here to talk to you business owners who have employees about the importance of visibility and engagement. This is separate. This is a separate discussion from your managers and supervisors and how they interact with employees. This is actually all about you. If you are a small business owner with 50 million in revenue or below, you really are the one setting the culture of the firm. The firm is actually you. And um, if you don't want it to be like you, you're going to have to take significant steps to make it like you. But if it, if you do want it to be like you and as it grows even larger, like from 50 million to 100 million, then you need to put in processes and so on so that when you leave, the culture will still be the same after you leave, when you leave or when you reduce the level of, um, the level of interaction on a daily basis with the company. So, but let me talk about the culture and engagement and so on. I've had, it's, it's always interesting to me when business owners come to me and they say that their employees are just messing up. <laughs> and I've always said this, if it's just one, then it's the employee or the person or whatever. But when there's a pattern of multiple people acting the same way, then it's most definitely you. So if your employees are not rising to the occasion and you're saying things like, it'll only get done if I do it myself, or I have to watch over them so closely, then you really do need to uh, do things differently. You need to really clarify the things that they need to do and tie it into your company's goals and your company's strategy. If you tell people, do this, like point by point by point, they have no room for creativity or expression or freedom and it's monotonous and you probably have a very high turnover rate like some of my clients have had. If you um, tell people what you need the end product or end service to look like and you, and you give them, you say, these are the steps that you have to follow, but you give them room within those steps, then they'll rise to the occasion. And if you say that I expect a, you know, an 80% customer satisfaction rate or a 95% um, completion rate or a whatever, you give them things that you can actually measure them by, uh, then again, they will rise to that. And if you especially among salespeople, not so much around among operational personnel, <laughs> but around among salespeople, if you have a little, you know, you have a board thing, who has the, who made the biggest sales or who has the most sales, or who has the highest gross margin or something like that, then there's a bit of healthy competition. And especially if you give them bonuses and um, rewards for their level of achievement. But there, but even with that, you make a difference. Just saying hi to people, walking around the company and engaging with people. If you have a hundred employees, you can't do that with everyone in multiple branches, you can't do that, but you can make quarterly trips um, to visit. And if you're much larger than that, then you can make semi-annual trips or you can have video conversations. But if you're a small company, you just do the walk around and don't walk around thinking about all the problems you have to solve. You have to be present, look people in the eye and engage. When you do this, hi, how's your family? How are you doing? You know, what are you doing for the 4th of July or things like that? When you do that, your um, employees take notice. Like it or not, you're, you're held to a higher standard. Your employees may even gripe about you, but they do think of you as being the vast majority of, of employees do think of you as being on a slightly higher level than them. So when you actually take the time to inquire about them and engage with them consistently and genuinely, sincerely, they notice it and it increases their morale and their motivation. Just a simple thing, talking to them, wow.